Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts, with gratitude and joy. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here, their worship and praise. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, <coughs> uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, by your almighty power, you opened the eyes of the blind and showed yourself to them. Turn our eyes away from worthless things and lead us to love you sincerely. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our first scripture lesson for today is from the book of the prophet Isaiah in chapter 42 beginning with verse 14. For a long time I have kept silent. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp and pant. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pools. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. But those who trust in idols, who say to images, you are our gods, will we turn back in utter shame? Hear, you deaf, look, you blind, and see. Who is blind but my servant, and deaf like the messenger I send? Who is blind like the one in covenant with me, blind like the servant of the Lord? You have seen many things, but you pay no attention. Your ears are open, but you do not listen. It pleased the Lord for the sake of his righteousness to make his law great and glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Now we join in responsive reading of our psalm for the day, Psalm 27. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away from me. You have been my helper. 
Do not reject me or forsake me. O oh God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson for today is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians in chapter 5, beginning with verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness righteousness and truth and find out what pleases the Lord have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness but rather expose them it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret but everything exposed by the light becomes visible and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. That is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise from the reading of the gospel. <coughs> the holy gospel for today is in the gospel of John, in chapter 9, beginning with the first verse, the First section of this reading will be our sermon text for today. And as he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus said. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told them, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied. And I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, How can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man. What do you have to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. To this, they replied, you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked, tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. This is the gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. 
We continue with our next hymn, hymn 769, Your Hand, O Lord, in Days of Old.
night light in the hallway enables us to navigate through an otherwise dark house and headlights on our car lead us through a dark night. So it is that Jesus <coughs> gives us light for our soul. He doesn't just provide the light though, he is the light. But what exactly does Jesus enable us to see? Well, let's look at our text for the answer. We hear, as Jesus went along, <clears throat> he saw a man blind from birth. Some people lose their eyesight by accident. Some, as a result of, of old age, but to never have any sight whatsoever, that's pretty rare. It's hard to imagine. Imagine never having seen any of the beauties of nature or the face of a loved one. To, to grope around in total darkness, morning, noon and night <coughs> very few can relate to that but spiritually speaking could you find a more accurate picture of our spiritual nature the way we were born than total blindness that's a biblical picture Paul wrote the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. And so, Jesus has compassion on this man who was born blind in a seemingly strange and simple way. <coughs> a little bit of spit and mud and washing in a pool. He gave sight to this man for the very first time. But Nick, make no mistake, the power, the power belonged to Jesus, and to Jesus alone. The light and the sight came from him. And in the same way, Jesus gives us spiritual light and sight. And he does so in very simple, Yet, strange ways. Water poured over our heads with the words in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And Peter tells us, this water now saves you. The Bible verses that we read and hear and memorize. And Paul reminds us, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the Word of God. Communicants confess their sins, they take and eat and drink. What an ordinary thing! And yet, at the same time, so extraordinary. Because here is the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, His own pledge to us of a clean conscience. And so he tells us, now depart in peace. And so just like that, once blind, we now see. Once blinded and duped by the God of this world, now we see Jesus as our Savior. In this Lenten season, we even turn to him in repentance. And we marvel at his great love for sinners. The shapes, the colors we see are, are amazing. A crown of thorns, a purple robe, a rugged cross, a cold tomb, and then an empty tomb, and then heaven. Our crimson sins 
made white as snow. But let's get back to some more sights. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Poor decisions can lead to unwanted consequences. Someone makes a habit out of lying, why they have to live with the fact that a lot of people just don't trust them. Someone makes a habit of speeding or parking in no parking zones, they shouldn't be surprised if they start up quite a collection of violations and their wallets get a little thinner. But why do bad things happen to people through no particular fault of their own? That's what the disciples wanted to know. They were assuming that all bad things in life <coughs> were the direct consequence of bad behaviors. In other words, if someone has something bad happen to them, well, they were assuming that God must be punishing them for some wrongdoing in their life. And since this man was born blind, why they assume, well, God must be punishing his parents that their child was born blind. We think that way too sometimes, so don't we? We go through a maybe a particular tough spell in our lives one thing after another, trials and tribulations that we face, and we might begin to wonder, what have I done to deserve this? Maybe God is punishing me. Maybe God's making me suffer for all those ungodly things that I said or did. And at times like that, it's comforting to recall the words of David in Psalm 103 that the Lord does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. He could, but he doesn't. In his grace, he chooses not to. Or as Paul wrote to the Romans, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Or, as Jesus simply put it, from the cross, it is finished. All sins have been paid for. They were all heaped on Jesus. Now they're all forgiven. And if that's the case, then, why did this blind man suffer? Why do we suffer all kinds of ailments and troubles in our lives? Well, why does God allow bad things to happen to his children? Well, Jesus put it plainly. So that the works of God might be displayed in him. This blindness for this man gave Jesus the opportunity to show his love and to show his almighty power. You keep on reading in John's Gospel from here. You'll see that this caused a great discussion to take place about Jesus. Yes, some people rejected him, but others believed, including this man who was once blind. Who would have thought that blindness would lead so many people to see Jesus, the Savior, with the eyes of faith? And all 
by the grace of God. So the next time something happens in your life, don't see it as punishment for your sin. Your sins have already been paid for by Jesus on the cross. And don't question God's wisdom or love. He knows what he's doing. Instead, pray that the word of God might be displayed in your life. Pray that whatever suffering you're going through would draw you closer to Jesus and force you to rely more and more on him and his strength. Pray that maybe the way that you endure your trial might give you an opportunity to talk about Jesus. Pray that Maybe the way you handle the circumstances of your life just might have an impact on someone else's life, a spiritual impact, an eternal <coughs> impact. <coughs> the light enables us to see. To see Jesus, the light of the world, who enables us to see to see forgiveness won for us. To see heaven that's been prepared for us and is waiting for us. Yes, to see Jesus, our compassionate Savior, so eager to help, so strong and capable of working all things for our good. Amen. And may he who has begun his good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us join in confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Can you be seated? We'll include in our prayers this morning a prayer on behalf of our sister in Christ, Edie Wagner, who is hospitalized in Maconia, and also a prayer on behalf of our brother in Christ, Dennis Bicey, who's hospitalized at Methodist Hospital. Let us pray. Compassionate Father, in your mercy, you transform even sickness and disease into blessings for your children. With this confidence, 
We commit all who are sick or suffering into your tender care. And we pray especially for our sister in Christ, Edie, and our brother in Christ, Dennis. Provide healing and relief to them according to your infinite wisdom and boundless mercy. Grant patient endurance if their sufferings must linger. And help them find true spiritual strength through Jesus and his cross during this time of physical weakness. By the work of the Holy Spirit, teach them to trust in your forgiveness, grace, and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We join in the responsive prayer of the church. O oh, gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand, the beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, the good of work and the gift of rest, the privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another. Above all, we praise you for your saving word and for your son's body and blood, which you give us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. O oh, great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering, and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Now, Lord, hear us as we bring you our private petitions. Now, eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ, who also teaches us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He made his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God 
and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is, my, is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. The congregation may be seated. The ushers may now begin to usher the communicants for you. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in this true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Congregation may be seated. We conclude our service with him 913. Come away from Rush and Hurry. <laughs>
Lenten supper will be at 5.30 to 6.30 with Lenten worship at uh, 7 o'clock. Wish you all the Lord's blessings through this coming week.